Rishi Sunak, uh, apparently there's a rumours afoot that he might be looking to, how do I put this nicely, U10 perhaps, on some of his thoughts around whether or not children should be able to transition their gender at school. The draft guidance now says that kids should be able to socially transition with the consent of their parents, which basically means they can go by a different name, they can put a different uniform on and change their pronouns and all the rest of it. Um, Martin Dobney, where do you stand on this? Um, another day, another U-turn, and it's not just Sunak. You know, Starmer's the same. Um, they flip-flop more often than a sort of Marbella beat shop. It's ridiculous. People want clarity. They want leadership, and they, they want a, a firm position on what is, I think, one of the biggest travesties of the modern age. It's but that, but that, tra- but that position has got to be doable. So the the original position uh, was that the original rumours was that uh, Rishi Sunak and government were going to try and outlaw basically this transitioning. Uh, that was the kind of tough talk. But now what they're saying is that because I think it's the Equalities Act was saying that it's going to uh, infringe on the rights of those people. So therefore, it wouldn't stand up in a court of law. Essentially, yeah, it's it's the same as why we, we can't deport terrorists. It's the same as why we can't close our borders, because the, the human rights of people trumps our own um, sovereignty, our own right to rule. Donald Trump you know, you know, blasted all of this out of schools in America, and then he was unelected, and Biden turned it around on day one. That's the problem. You know, I think every decision that the Tories make now is going to get blown out of the water anyway. They feel like a corpse government. Back to this point, um, I think the, the notion um, that children can be, uh, I think the word is groomed in school by activists with a vested interest in gender politics. They've learned this from their university years, using our children as their own social experiments. This is a contagion, um, and I think it needs to be kicked out of schools. I'd like, to, I'd like to have an independent audit of everybody who's allowed into schools, every external educator, no more mermaids, no more stonewall, let's get pride out of the classrooms to get this out, because we just don't need to be teaching this stuff. Teach kids, educate them, don't indoctrinate them. Michael? Well, it seems like you're having a completely different argument to what this story actually is. So what this story actually is, is if a parent wants their child to transition and the child wants to socially transition, then the school should respect that. So it's about the autonomy and individual rights of a child and their parents. So this is about the family making the decision. So now you're saying this is about the school indoctrinating children. It's the precise opposite. This is saying that... Family and children should together be able to make the decision yeah, but that wasn't about the, how someone transitions. But that wasn't Kemi Badenoch's position. That, that, that wasn't the position of the Tory government a few weeks ago. What I'm saying is that they're changing position to go for something more moderate. Well, they're the changing time. position to a position which respects individual rights and respects the rights of parents to decide how their children should be raised, which and, and should, to me, be a conservative value. And they're changing their position because they know that the laws which, which, which will be going against them won't allow them to take that position anyway. It's the same on controlling borders. It's because the human rights legislation would be weaponised against the government and the government would lose. And that's the problem. You know, as, as long is as it a problem? I mean, it, do, you want, do you think that if, if a parent wants their child to socially transition, the child wants to socially transition, remember, we can be talking about someone who's, who's 16 or 17, right? If, if the child wants to, the parent wants them to, you think the school should turn around and say, no, you can't do what you want no. to do, you can't do what your parents want to do, we are not going to allow you to socially transition. Why does transition. that need to involve schools? If, if, if a child wants, wants to socially transition with the blessing of their parents, why does that need to take well, place so in schools? Well, that's a private matter between the family and the child. And how do the children learn these ideas in the first place? Forget about just well, again, this learning media. idea. So they, they, you, they you'll learn probably know about this stuff in schools. You'll probably know the video of Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s, sort of complaining that kids are getting taught they have an inalienable right to be gay. Yeah, right? It's a complete that was the, thing. I don't think it is a complete. It is. Thing. That's the politics that came along with with Section 28, where it became impossible to talk about something such as homosexuality. Now, I grew up as a young gay guy when Section 28. I mean, it was basically it was removed when I was about 14. So it would still have been affecting schools and when I was in year seven. And I think that was really, really toxic, saying teachers can't talk about homosexuality. Now, people would have talked about it exactly the same way that you did. People say people are grooming no. people to I, be gay. I, I, people didn't used to be gay. Now loads of people are gay. It's because of these groomers going into I school. You, you, now you, what we realise is that actually there were just lots of people who were always gay and now they have the confidence to say it. it I think we're going to see a very similar it's an apples and pears, view it's an when it comes to transgender people. You know, having, having a healthy conversation about your chosen sexuality is quite different from encouraging hormonal treatment or a route towards surgery. Those conversations start in schools, and parents are then getting the baggage. In my, in my son's peer group, there are at least four kids in, in every year who, who are trans, and guess what? 
two or three of them have changed their mind after a couple of years because just a phase they were going through. Almost all of them are on the autistic spectrum and through, through proper conversations and learning to love themselves for who they are, confused young individuals, rather than somebody who needs surgical or hormonal intervention or indoctrination, they can have perfectly happy lives as ordinary gay people down the line. We, you cannot reverse the roots down hormonal and surgical roots. And what I'm saying is, if, if individual parents and individual children want to, want to do this, fine, but keep it out of schools. Well, it's going to be in the schools, right? Because a child spends a lot of their time in the school. So if, if a parent has decided that we think it's in the best interest of this kid to socially transition. Now, you accept now there are gay people. But in the 80s, people would have said... Do. No, but in the 80s, there'd be people saying, well, no, it's, it's not the case that people are just gay and it's about whether or not they have the confidence to speak about it. They would say, these people are being groomed, they're being encouraged to be gay. Now, I think of transgender people in exactly the same way. I think there are many people who, in the past, would have come out as transgender, who instead ended up sort of living their life a little bit uncomfortable in, in their body, in their social identity. Now these people are able to sort of come out and be open about that. And then people like you say, oh, they're being groomed. Oh, no, this yeah. is social contagion. But, 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 yeah, no, maybe yeah. this is just people realising that now they can speak comfortably about who they are. It's a little bit like being left-handed. So there was a period when we as society like recognised that. It's, it's we as recognize like that some people can be left-handed. Suddenly, no one was left-handed. Then it went up to 10% of the population. Right, right? hang on a second. Because if I'm writing with my... If my child's writing with his left hand and I decide, you know what, your life's probably going to be easier if you write with your right hand or whatever, and I shove a pencil in his right hand, the worst that's going to happen is going to be ambidextrous, is going to be able to write with both hands, good for you. There's not going to be any long-term uh, material damage to his life and his well-being by being forced to hold a pencil. They, they won't surgically hand. have their left hand removed. No, so, so the, the, I think the analogy is actually somewhat different. So the damage, so when it wasn't accepted that people would be left-handed, the damage would be making someone who is naturally left-handed spend their life writing with their right hand. Then what they get called is, oh, my God, they've got terrible handwriting. This person is, is very bad at school. What you realise is that if you just let them write with their, their left hand, they're going to have a better life, they're going to have a more productive life. Now, I think a similar thing is the case. I mean, it's complicated. Don't get me wrong, this is complicated. I think it's, I think it's a really analogy, yeah, so I'm saying, I. for I the think... reasons I've just said, um, that actually if you shove a pencil in the wrong person's, in someone's wrong hand, you know... I think that can be very damaging. Yeah, you, your writing might be a bit de a messy. My brother was one of those. My dad wouldn't refuse point blank to accept my brother. One of my brothers was left-handed. He now writes with both hands. I'm he, he doesn't really care. He's not scared in any way, shape or form. Uh, he's quite talented, actually, with his writing in both hands. I'd love to be able to do it. <laughs> but what we're talking about here, as a mummy, myself, I am deeply concerned about this because, yes, I imagine that there are some people, some children out there that perhaps, uh, to follow the uh, literal definition, are transgender. But I think there are a huge amount of children that are not transgender, that are just uncomfortable, particularly when it comes to going through puberty. Your body starts changing in all kinds of ways, and especially as a woman, as a girl. You, you go from just being like, you know, one of the lads you're mocking in to all of a sudden you're developing these uh, breasts and all the rest of it, and then you start to become uh, seen by people as a sexual being. And if you're not that way inclined or whatever, it becomes quite uncomfortable. And if someone said to you, you know what, I can wave you this wand, and actually, da da you can transition and make all of that go away, that would be very attractive and appealing to an awful lot of people. Mm. But when you start shoving people onto that route, when you start pumping them full of these hormone blockers, puberty blockers and whatever else, you start chopping off people's bits, you start making them infertile. And then actually, when you get down the line, you realise, oh, you know what, I am who I am, and I wish that I could have just been happy happy with who I am. Well, guess what? Do you know what? Your ship has now sailed. You've permanently damaged your body. You've perhaps permanently made yourself infertile. And that's why I think this is a very important, I agree it's sensitive, but a very important topic, uh, which needs to be robustly debated. It needs to be held up uh, to scrutiny. And I think it needs to be challenged as well. Well, the ship can sail in the other direction as well, right? So obviously, you know, my age, when I was growing up, it would have been very difficult to come out as, as trans at school. Now, I know many people who've become well, who've come out as trans later in life. I think no, it's become fashionable now. If you can say well, you've the, got well, a trans well, kid, I think that people think that makes them have a little bit of social kudos, if yeah, you ask absolutely. me. I, I really don't think there are people who are intentionally transing their kids well, for social okay, cachet. Well, they, they I think the argument that maybe there is some social contagion among teenagers is stronger, but what we do have to recognise is True. that some people are genuinely trans. They're only going to be happy if they can transition. And it is much easier tiny, if you start tiny, that earlier than later tiny, because those physical changes do make tiny, transitioning tiny harder. tiny, tiny percentile of, of Britons, yet here we are surrendering the rights of, of, of young women, surrendering the rights of other people in the name of this social experiment. Well, do you know what? Uh, an important uh, conversation, a difficult one as well. Like